What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. And I'm Will King. And in the build show today, framing. Everybody loves framing, but this is a very specific type of framing. We're gonna be getting into the weeds on this SIPS construction. Now what right. is SIPS? SIPS, structural insulated panels. And we got a display, right but not only that, we went out to a <laughs> job site, yeah. we got all kinds of nerdy info. This is a long video guys, we're gonna get into the weeds here. Today's build show is sponsored by Extreme Panel Technologies. Let's get going. All right, Will, as we start this video, let's break down what the system is and what is SIPS involved. So explain to us, in your mind, what is SIPS? So SIPS is a layer of expanded polystyrene foam that you're okay. seeing as the core. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as two layers of OSB creating the inside and outside sheathing, if you will, mm -hmm. to give it both its strength that we're looking for in a SIPS panel and just the, the ease of putting it up and the speed that really makes SIPS special. Got it. So the builder basically starts with the foundation and that can vary depending on where you're building because uh, this company, Extreme Panel in particular, we're talking about today, based in Minnesota, shipping all over the US, even Alaska and Canada, that sort of thing. But these panels come out in the truck. Yep. They come to a finished, ready to go job site, uh, foundation I should say. Mm -hmm. And then these panels go together kind of like a, a panelized frame set. Yep. But what's cool here is We've got a structural panel, not just an insulated panel. That's where the, the name comes yeah, from. That's exactly uh, right. And tell me about panel sizes. You were actually at a job last week, Will, in Kansas that we're that's gonna right. cut to in a little bit. Yep. But the sizes that you saw on that job site, what, what yeah. were you looking at? So all the panels are gonna be eight foot long or eight foot wide, I guess, is kind of their max width. That's what okay. they're buying these sheets in from okay. their factory. But then they vary in length. So if you've got 10 foot walls, you're gonna see 10, 10 foot panels. But I actually saw a 22 foot panel get flown in for the roof. So that's a really big panel. So eight, an you know, eight, eight, by, eight 22. by 22. Yeah, so you can get some very large panels and that's what really speeds up the process and I think makes SIPS special. You know, it's, it's a very fast operation when you're moving that kind of square footage at one time. So. And, and so speed obviously is one of the big benefits. What yeah. did you hear speed wise from the framer on that yeah. job site? So basically just, that? I asked that framer there, Eric, and we're gonna to talk to him a little later in the video, uh, but he said about half the time that it would have taken him to stick frame it, he can put together a SIPS house. Holy so he's cow. cutting his time in half, and it's not just framing, it's also insulation. So you gotta, if we were gonna compare apples to apples, we'd have to add the insulation time in to our stick built houses to really compare time to time, so. And I would throw in, it's framing, it's insulation, and you've got this kind of built-in air sealing yes, benefit. it's huge. In SIPS, which I think is really difficult for you and I. We've been using all kinds of systems to get our houses more and more airtight. And this system, it's kind of built in, but this is not really a new type of framing, right? This has been around for a while. Yeah, it's a, basically a hundred year old technology. I mean, SIPS is not new to, I guess, our market or the U.S., but over time it has definitely evolved and became more um, efficient, I think, and, they, and they're able to, I guess, engineer it to all of our specs and, and jobs that we're needing. So it's been around for a long time, but yeah, the air sealing of it, I mean, as soon as it's erected or as soon as it's put together, we're airtight. That's pretty and awesome. So, you know, like I, I mentioned to you, the framing time at that job site in Kansas, and I think we have a clip of this, but basically, in six days, they were completely in the dry, completely framed and air sealed. And he had a little window unit, air conditioner, cooling the whole job. Holy cow. So, and, and what in size a, house was that? It's a, in a, about 2,200 heated, I think. Okay. So, so not, five, not, six days to be totally dried in. Yep. That's a big deal. Slab foundation. Yeah. He was so right. when I think SIPS, I think of this big uh, kind of thick block mm -hmm. of insulation that's continuous. Uh, do you know some of the numbers involved? Like these walls on the job site you were at mm -hmm. uh, were pretty similar to this mock-up. They, they were, were a mimicking a traditional two by six wall, right? Same thickness, that's right. Meaning the top plate here is basically a, a two by six mm -hmm. with a half inch and half inch that's OSB right. sheathing on both sides. Yep. But they use a, t a wider top and bottom plate so they can right. kind of slide those down in and mm -hmm. structurally attach those. Yep. And that means that EPS is pretty high R value, isn't it? Yeah, that foam is. So I think the expanded polystyrene foam in this wall assembly is like an R26. Holy cow. Yes. Yeah, so and continuous R26. And continuous. There's no studs. So you have no thermal bridging. We have a continuous R26 all the way around the house. Uh, and then. How about that roof? This baby here is 12 and a quarter inches thick. 
So that's an R51 Holy roof cow. assembly. So you have a really big insulated cap. And again, no thermal bridging, Zero. right? No yep. two by 12s in mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. to bridge that heat one way or another. Right. Yep, it makes a very insulated envelope for us. That's a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. A couple things I want to mention about Extreme Panel. They obviously sponsored the video, but this is really more than a panel manufacturer. Uh, I've actually done a SIPS house before. I did a video on that years ago, uh, and that was really a, a, a just a panel manufacturer. I didn't get any support from them on finding a framer. Yeah. Uh, they had nobody on the job site that could come visit me. Uh, and I had to gather a bunch of materials for that job ahead of time. On the other hand, Extreme Panel, you're going to find out here in a minute, they've got some really good support. And I think the builder on site mentioned to you that was a big deal, especially in a remote job site, right? That's right. Yeah, so they do. They're, they're completely supporting their builders and their customers. And that's something that really spoke to that framer that I met with in Kansas. But in regards to what all they ship out to the job site, it's, it's really all-inclusive. So it's not just the panels. They're actually sending all the tools that you need to put them together, including mm. the battery-operated nailers and the sausage gun they use for their SIP sealer that we, that we can talk about in a little while. Okay. So all that's included, all the fasteners, nails. What about like glue lambs or ridge that's, beams, yeah, that sort so of thing? Yeah, so you talk about the roof assemblies, they do. They engineer their own glue lamb beams to go underneath them. And they're, they're going to be pre-cut, engineered, and ready to set when they arrive at your job site. So that's, that's legit. A, that's neat. Yep. That's impressive. Yeah. Yep. And I understand they've got support for manual J's uh, because when you build a house like this that's extremely airtight and has really high uh, R values in the walls, mm -hmm. you're not going to want to use traditional HVAC equipment sizing. You're definitely not going to want to use any rules of thumb. Those are out the window. <laughs> So they've got a great person that will link you up with so you can figure out, hey, what do I actually need to heat and cool this? Because very likely it's going to be half the size of a traditional built house. That's right. Uh, the other thing that was interesting about these guys is they've got a network of builders and frame contractors. In fact, some of them travel, like Eric, that you're going to meet with here in a minute, uh, who will go from town to town to help erect these buildings, not help, to, to frame, frame these buildings. That's right. And when you talk about that five-day cycle time on a job like that, that makes it doable for somebody to come in who's from out of town to do that. That's a really big deal. I didn't have that when I built a SIPS house several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of all-in-one uh, solutions type contractor from Extreme Panel really makes me yeah. want to build a house with them compared to maybe somebody that's more like a panel distributor. And if you're going to use your own framer, they also have the ability to bring out their experts and install team just to help train the framers. That way they can be educated and put it together. Because it's really not hard to do. There's just a few simple steps they have to learn, yeah. and then they're off the races. Yeah, so. it's, it's really just kind of learning a slightly just, new process. Just educating your subs. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. That being said, Will, why don't we go out to that Kansas job site? Uh, you kind of acted as my remote reporter. So let's go see what <laughs> Will found interesting out of that job site. All right, so I'm here with Perry from Extreme Panel. We're inside the garage of the SIPS house that they've been building. And I want to ask some questions because I'm, sure. I'm seeing some things behind me that I don't know what they are, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So let's talk through some of these details. All right, so we've got two bottom plates, right? And, and that's not too abnormal. Seeing one's not abnormal to me with stick frame, but we got two. Yep. So, and that, I'm assuming that's that's obviously just to lock that panel in, correct? It's, it's, it's kind of the inlet for the panel to sit down on top. So every part around the panel has an inch and a half recess to it. Yep. That's our standard recess. And that bottom plate is no different. So mm -hmm. we see the treated plate and then we put beads of glue between the, the top board, the white board on top and that seal plate so we can stop air from migrating right. from inside to out, outside to in. Mm -hmm. And then we do the same thing on top of that panel, on top of that plate, we'll put another bead of glue. So right. everything we do gets sealed. Air sealed. And the yep. sealant we used, it's SIP seal. It's made for what we do, and it is simply air tightening. We, yep. are, we are sealing it as we're building yep. it. By yep. sending out the automated gun, right. we're speeding up construction by three to four times. Rather than a one you have to pull by hand. So I can imagine as much talk as I've seen today, it's you'd have some massive forearms. Massive forearms. <laughs> you were squeezing and, the gun all and day. In an hour and a half, your hands are just yeah. going to be hurting. So we send that out on bigger projects. We'll send two of them out yep. because it's getting utilized all the time. Right. And getting the feel for that gun is a big deal. Yep. So we'll typically have one guy on the site. That's your job. That's their job. It, and I even noticed like the, the roof panels when they were flying mm -hmm. those in this mm -hmm. morning. They were actually, and you know, I thought it was really smart. While I was on the ground, everybody's nice and safe. Yeah. Go ahead and use that sausage gun, 
yep. put all the adhesive on it that you need yep. before it even leaves the ground. Yes, right? you're doing everything you can do at a safe, safe spot on the ground safety so factor that there. when it goes up, it's getting, first of all, you're getting a better bead on it than they're going to put on up there. Yep. Yep. And, and it, that's the thing. Let's yep. get a good bead so that we know that there's a good seal. So the bottom of this wall is recessed. We talked about mm -hmm. that. And it sits on top of that double top, double, double bottom plate. Mm -hmm. So that's not, that's not a big deal. Yep. So let's talk about fasteners. So I know that the, the OSB at the bottom, I mean, I'm seeing screws here. Correct. But I've yep. also seen nails and it, yeah. they're kind of using both. So yeah. So there... what, what they did was they screwed a few in together. To just, start it. Just to start it. And yeah. get, I like putting a few screws in because this wall, once you set it up, it's not going to go any place. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless we, we have a wind today, but you're going right. to hold it. But it takes a couple little screws to just get things going. And then all of a sudden when they're done and they know that wall is good, yep. you can nail it off. And we supply the nails. There'll be six inches on center. We yep. supply the nailer so that yep. you have that. And the ring shank there. nails, right? Ring shank nail. It's a special nails. nail that's that's not clipped. That way it'll go into the OSB not too far. Mm, so it's all sense. about yeah. little details that yeah. we know. And no clipped head nails with the right. ring shank. I, mm -hmm. I actually did a thing recently where had to look this up, but ring shanks are actually double the holding strength yes. of a smooth shank nail. And we talk yes. about the strength of your panel, which I want to get to because you yeah. mentioned earlier that this wall is about two and a half times to three times so, stronger. And this is our this is our engineer telling us this, right? Mm -hmm. That when we take our six inch wall, we could compare that to a two by ten at sixteen inch on center mm -hmm. axial load bearing. So that's okay. that's a big deal. It that's can take a, yeah. a lot more load than what you would think it does. Right. Now, in this wall. There's no studs. There is, yeah. It is solid foam, except for in the corner, the bottom plate, top plate, and then like around the doors here, yep. where that will get infilled with lumber so we can fasten the door to it, right? Right. right. But literally zero studs. Which and is great. Yeah. yeah. And I was talking earlier, having all this OSB behind your sheetrock. <laughs> yeah. You never have to worry about hitting a stud when you're hanging a mirror. You never have to worry about it. <laughs> or ADA bars or toilet paper holders, anything right. in a house. It, right. That's a, I think that's a little point to, to bring up. And, and people have asked, you know, sheetrock, do I have to sheetrock it? Yes, you're still going to sheetrock it to get your... Yep. But a benefit of this is not having the cavity right, right. away. So if fire gets through a sheetrock, then what do we get? We get into a cavity. Yep. Here, we yep. get through the sheetrock, we get into another layer right. of sheeting. Then we get into foam mm -hmm. that has flame retardant in, it, in yep. it. So if that flame is, if it's still going, yep. it's going to burn. But right. it can extinguish itself if there's no oxygen. Right. So that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. The first thing, I'll be honest, when I look at a SIPS panel wall, when as a new builder coming yeah. in to SIPS, how do my electricians get in here? Because I'm, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to get a little talking to by my electrician yep. if I say, hey, well, I'm going to build a SIPS house. Correct. <laughs> and I show him that yeah. every box goes in OSB. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, you guys got that figured out. So, so tell me about it. What we've done is we've tried to create uh, a channel mm -hmm. system through the panels that can be utilized for any wall. It doesn't okay. matter where you're building it. Like here in the garage, we just put a chase at the switch height, right? Uh -huh. So we know that at this red line, there's a chase going all the way across. Okay. We have a, a red line down there. There's those, a chase going up right there. Yeah. And it's real simple. This is an eight foot wide panel and that chase is two feet from that edge and two feet from this edge. Mm. And then it's always this 44, 40 whatever inches yeah. off the ground. Um, but creating that makes our, our wiring actually quite simple. So if they're going to cut out their box with yep. their light switches, they're going to yeah. cut that out, pull the foam out to yep. get to the chase. You said yep. it's like about two inches from the face? It's two inches from the back of from the, the face. the back of the face. And then they can use like a remodel box. You right. Know, they work really well. Um, there's There's a, a rectangle box that has a two-inch metal tab on yep. it that it actually mounts right to right. the OSB that works well. And in this build, Eric, Eric Couch, the builder, was smart enough to know that, hey, we have some wiring up in the ceiling that right. the electrician's going to struggle with. Right. So he did it and it took him yeah. roughly half an hour to run the wire, get it from point A to point B where it needed to go. Right. And that's going to save the electrician save lots them of time a ton and of trouble. Time. And, yeah, um, that makes a lot of sense. And, and for us, we're looking at a panel system that has a grid system in it. But if we know where the lighting is going to go, we can, we can take that grid system and change it yeah. according to how they want to wire it and give them chases yeah. to accommodate the lighting the best that we can. Okay, so they have like a, yes. a real lighting plan and everything. Mm -hmm. You guys could accommodate that We can too. accommodate it as much as possible. Yeah. And then, you know, a conversation with the electrician, 10 minutes yep. is really what it takes. Okay. And they don't have to double charge or overcharge. Mm -hmm. yep. It's really not rocket science. It's just you yep. can't see it. So... It makes them nervous. So how about drains and, and like 
pecs, plumbing lines. I'm assuming sure. ideally it's going to have to be in the slab, right? Yeah, it's right. going to be the best case. So you don't right. have to stub it up. And so, so they'll stub it up and, you know, we're from Minnesota. We don't put any vents, um, plumbing. We leave that out. <laughs> and then we remind people in Texas, yeah, yeah. hey, didn't we have some freezing <laughs> situations? Yeah. So we try to say, okay, can we move those vents to an interior, interior wall? Walls, can right. we move that plumbing sense. to an interior wall? Yeah. How can we accommodate things to make that smarter and mm -hmm. not have a vent that could possibly freeze or right. a water hose bib or, or hose anything bib. else? So. I mean, you have to have certain things that go through it, but in the most part, let's try to take out what right. we don't have. Something anytime with. you can get water out of an exterior yeah. wall, it makes sense. Right. I mean, because even if in uh, I guess a, uh, a non-northern climate like you guys, I mean, it gets cold in Alabama. Oh I think. yeah. Even where I live at Christmas this year, we were like zero, two degrees for like right. an entire week, mm -hmm. which we were all about to die because we didn't know <laughs> what to do. But lots yep. of water leaks, yeah. lots, lots oh, of yeah. issues in houses when we sure. had cold like that. So especially with power outages, mm -hmm. you know, that's the right. that's the thing. So um, let's, let's move on to the roof. Yeah. I mean, so so I think that that's a big um, something I wasn't expecting when I got here. I was I was I was I had this visualized, but talking about these big, I mean, this is. 22 feet it's roughly 20? 22 to 24 feet i'm not quite sure the yeah. length of this but it's one area. it's one roof panel here we have a, a main ridge beam and then what we call a mid beam in mm -hmm. between and then actually on the other side here we have a 10 foot wall plus we have a couple more plates to get us up a little higher because that 10 foot's a critical point for our cutoff of our panel. Mm -hmm. We can make a 10, 20 foot panel, so we cut it in half. We can gotcha. make a 24 foot panel, cut it in half. Mm -hmm. So we try to utilize and maximize the yield of the product. Yep. On the other side, where we have an eight foot wall, we actually bubble cut the wall uh, so that yeah. we can have a better connection. Right. But here, a lot of guys like this because then they can kind of burrow out the wood to run a wire if they want yep. to. So there's, there's pros and cons of both. Okay. But like here, we designed the ridge beams. They got they were sized and specified according to this site right mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and then and you guys handle that. You're, we you're, handle you're all that. Your engineering, your design team's yep. handling. We have what all size that. Beam and Correct. The spacing, right? Now underneath these beams, we have a, a glue lamb within the wall, so you can't even tell it's there right now. Okay. But I know it's there, and like here, we have a garage door header now, with a beam come coming in the panel? down in the middle. Did that post come down? That in the, in post the panel? will come. It will come pre-labeled for that panel. Say that panel is 14 and 15. 15, that would okay. say 14 and 15 on it. Yep. It's cut to length. It's in between them, essentially. Yes. I got you. And it's actually pre-cut to length, so it's mm -hmm. ready to fit in. Okay. So all those things, the headers that we make, we make a, a two-ply insulated header. Mm -hmm. So for the northern climate especially, we're continual insulation. Right. Except for those bottom plates, top plates, and even the header has is an insulated header. So yep. those all those little details yep. make a big difference. And from a contractor standpoint, to have this header put together, cut to length, oh, and in the right yeah, situation, instead of a 48 foot LVL coming out, yeah. you're dealing with a piece that's already just put it in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. I just can't imagine any other way to get a fully framed house, basically in the dry in five, five days. Five days with basically you know? four guys. And this is a, you know, it's only what, 3,400 on the roof. But even yeah. if you, let's, let's talk about two story, let's talk about maybe five or 6,000 square feet, something that I'm used to building. Mm -hmm. We're still talking two weeks. Yeah. And they're out where it takes us anywhere from eight, eight, nine weeks to yeah. stick frame it. So that's a, that's a significant cost savings in labor. Mm -hmm. And we're already, we're in the dry that fast. You catch weather dry. right, this thing never even gets rained on. Yep. Which I, I think I is incredible. Yeah. You, you just, you yeah. explained every bit of that. And I love it. <laughs> well, because, you're teaching me something. Because yeah. it's, it's uh, to have a house done. And, you know, we were talking about houses that we've done in Alabama, small, small little affordable homes that we, they were built in a, day and right. three quarter, right? Mm -hmm. And it's to stick frame that they would be two weeks to three weeks. And mm -hmm. it's been raining so much on those job sites that they can't get to it. Yep. And then all the elements come into the building yep. because now the floor is wet, the studs are wet, yep. everything is soaked. Yep. And by getting it in the dry, you're you're Speed. changing the game yeah. of the finish of yep. this house. We even have a, a period after we get mm -hmm. ours finally in the dry and sealed off where we have to run dehumidifiers for an extended period of time mm -hmm. to help dry out all the rainwater yeah. and all the bulk water so that we don't have issues later on mm -hmm. with trim cracking and that kind of right. thing. So and that's a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about, you know, one of the, the, the naysayers out there, right? So SIPs panels, the, the thing that immediately comes to mind when I'm, when I'm talking to somebody about SIPs, and, and I did that quite a bit before I came to see mm -hmm. you, by the way. Yeah. And people say, well, yeah, you're good till you remodel. You're good till you have to remodel something or you have to cut out a new opening or whatever. Sure. But after what I've seen today, that's not tr necessarily true. No. Because I think that just like what I'm seeing here with this header, 
that's a, just an engineering question with you guys. Get the spec, and you're and you're off get, the races, right? Get the right? spec. We Is can design that. It? We can design that header. Yeah. We'll figure out what's going on above it. We'll get the header sized, get the support sized, cut the opening, right? Mm -hmm. Have one of the guys come out with their tools and cut it. Yep. Uh, it's not a big deal. You can even do it with normal construction tools. Drill yep. four corners. Yep. Cut it on the inside, cut yep. it on the outside, take a sawzall and yep. notch it out. So you definitely don't want to just hire a random company that's never touched SIPs <laughs> so, to just come cut a hole. Yeah. That probably has happened. Well, sure. But the, the industry has evolved. But, so you had all these companies that hey, I just want to sell raw blank SIPs because it's a, it's quick. I don't have yep. to have any liability. It's just an, an easy answer. Well, the more we got into prefabbing and making mm -hmm. everything exact, it's it's almost like having a cabinet design yep. where everything is exact, and that's how this is. Yep. And it takes so much time out of the process mm -hmm. that it's paying for that extra that, that we're doing in our factory. Right. So all those little things add up to a lot of time saved. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say I'm impressed, and I appreciate the hospitality. Hey, man, Thanks this for has been so much fun. It's been Thank good. you. Thanks again. Yeah. So I'm here with Eric Couts from Premier Homes in Northwest Missouri. Yep. Is that right? I live in Maryville, Missouri. So, but this is Tescott, Kansas, where we are today. So, um, Eric and his guys have just built this house that we're at today. This is about 3,400 square feet of SIPs panels, SIP, right? SIP, SIP walls and SIP, SIP roofs and SIP roofs. So, tell me about the man hours. So, like, what what are you? Uh, you, you said this is going since Friday. So, how many man hours is that for you? We started Friday about one o'clock with two guys. Uh, we added a few guys throughout the week on some things, but uh, we had 160 hours in the panels. Wow. And we had about 130 hours in the wall framing inside and the, the porch overhang on the front. So you're thinking that's probably about half of the time yeah, if you were going to stick build this house. Probably half about of what half. you could do. And you know, that also includes you know, the framing, the sheeting, and insulating the whole house. It's true, because it's already insulated when it's mm -hmm. put up. So I actually noticed as soon as you guys have it framed, you've already got a window unit going. Yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> yesterday afternoon at one o'clock we put a window air conditioner in because it's supposed to be 110 here on Saturday and the plumber and electrician want to come work. Yeah, that's so, so cool. So we stuck a window air conditioner so they could yeah. you know, do that and we have everybody here today and they can see the difference between outside and inside and yeah. it you know, with just a little 20,000 BTU air conditioner. It's you know, it's not a lot, but it's making the difference in what and, we and got. probably two 2,500 square feet that's in there. Yeah, yeah something like that. Well, you know, I think about like the, I guess air tightness, and that's a big conversation in the industry. Mm -hmm. We're all talking about air tightness, and as energy codes have changed, we're all having to build mm -hmm. those. I guess we could call them for the, today those leaky stick built houses. We're having to air seal them. But I feel like SIPs like kind of revolutionized the, the industry in air tightness. I guess your blower door test, what, what are you seeing um, air tightness with what we've just seen today? Most of the ones that we've tested have been 0 0.2, 0 0.3, yeah. you know, or yeah. less. Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing. You know, my guys even want to be there when we're doing the blower door because they know that they've done the right thing too. Right. So yeah. I think it gives them some, it you know, does. some ownership in the project because yes. they see, well, we can we can do this, and that's what I like about working with Extreme. I mean, they do a lot with building science when they do their summits and they do the kind of their training. Right. We don't we talk very little about panels at those. It's more about all the other things that go with that it go to in. make the package work. Yeah. You know the the yeah. bath fans, the mm -hmm. you know mini splits or whatever you're going to use to make everything a complete unit instead yeah. of we're going to sell you panels. Yeah. Well, so you bring up extreme panel. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. So if you're a new builder, mm -hmm. all right, who a lot of the guys watching this video, mm -hmm. they're going to be, well, they're already in the industry, they're getting into it, and they're curious about SIPs. Mm -hmm. So just pretend like you're talking to me because I haven't built with SIPs before, full transparency. But you've built with a lot of different manufacturers. Mm -hmm. I think you've, you obviously have lots of years. What makes them stand out, and how do you get started? Like what, what's the um, process? Biggest thing is, you know, you give them a set of plans and let them do a takeoff of it. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that with Extreme, I mean, they send everything. The nail package, the weatherization package, your Tyvek, you know, house paper. I mean, even the Milwaukee sausage yeah, the, gun. The, the Milwaukee sausage out. gun, the nails, <laughs> the wild. screws. I mean, if, if yeah. you need it to put this house together, you don't have to, you know, from here it's 35 minutes to go to, you know, yeah. a, a place to get tools or screws or whatever. You know, so we're out here on the job site and, you know, if it's not in that trailer, I don't want to have to go get it uh, because it costs you money. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, not every other, I've worked with two other manufacturers. I mean, I'd have nothing bad to say about 
their panels right. other than quality control means a lot and with extreme i mean if i have a question on panels and how to make things better yeah. we, you know me and several of the other builders will sit down you know we have several of them here today that we all bounce those things off one another and say well if you would make the panels this yeah. with the tolerances when we're on site we're not trimming panels at the end and yeah. you know those things and they've listened and field you know, support. And the yep. field support has been great i think as a builder when you have a vendor like that that you can really get a good relationship with mm -hmm. it, it makes their product even better because not only are they continuing to advance what that they're building but they're also supporting you and your company and and honestly i bet if i had to guess these guys not only are there for your support for things like the panels but you mentioned things like bath fans and ventilation and all the other things that go into a house like this. Yeah, when we talk about sizing and support. heating and cooling equipment, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if if they don't have someone there that knows, they can connect me with that person that does. Yeah. I mean, it's wonderful that they have that network of yeah. suppliers and stuff when they do those summits. It's tables all the way around the room of people that, you know, might yeah. be windows, it might be bath fans, it might be, you know, high velocity heating and cooling, it, you yeah. know, different things that, I don't see at my local yeah. heating and cooling yeah. place or whatever, you know, and it doesn't take anything special to do these. It's just getting your people to, you know, the change isn't a four it's letter word. System. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, change yeah. is, you know, my heating and cooling guy that's been doing mine has done them with me from day one in the first house. He's like, I don't believe you that that's what size of unit we're putting on there. Yeah. So, you know, my house, he said, should be a two ton heat pump. He put a three that would modulate down to run yep. at 25% that's right. to make him feel comfortable. Yeah. He says, yeah. I, I come to your house all the time. I've never seen it above stage two yep. and it has five stages, you know, yeah. so it's getting that comfort factor yeah. and, and it's going to take, you know, it always takes a little bit of time to get yeah. people to work with you to understand yeah. that. But. When you're building tight envelopes and efficient homes, you have to have that mechanical guy that knows what he's doing. Yeah. Otherwise, Unfortunately, the, the system itself, like SIPs, mm -hmm. would get the bad reputation, mm -hmm. even though it's not that, that's not the issue. The issue is actually the bad mechanicals going into yeah. it. But Eric, thanks for having us out, yeah, man. I no will problem. say I have been very impressed it's fun. With, with watching all this go together. I'm and glad appreciate you guys are here because it's cool to, you know, share with other yeah. people. You know, Absolutely. It's, that's what I think is the key. It's not just to continue building, it's to yeah. you know teach other people and share that knowledge. So, so real quick, if, if anybody's watching this video and they're trying to find somebody to help them with the, the install part, you mm -hmm. know, because I know that you're not only a custom builder, but you're also doing uh, just SIPs installs too. Mm -hmm. How do they find you? What's the best place to, to reach you? Uh, Facebook's probably the best, or you know, you can reach me through Extreme Panel if you talk to them about panels. They have all of, you know, there's a network of builders that we all work together and you know if i'm not in that area and can't do it i mean i know of three others that they work with you know regularly yeah. that we can you know we all share that, that direction. yeah so i mean that's how i would you know tackle it because we all have different skill sets and do different projects so it's yeah. you know nice to you know team up with them i know i'm going to mississippi to do one i've been to arkansas uh, here i mean we kind of go a little yeah. bit everywhere but and, and that's why this system's great because you can go to Mississippi and yeah. frame a whole house. I've been here a week. In two weeks you know, and you're out <laughs> or less. I'm going you know, to Mississippi so. for that house. It's going to be six days and yeah, we're out. That's incredible. And it's right on the coast. So what, right. what better place to go for a week? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for yeah. having us, man. Let's go get some food. Sounds good. All right. So I think we've covered what we needed to in the field. I hope you learned a lot about SIPs construction today because I know I sure have. And with that being said, it's time to get you back to Austin with Matt to take a little bit deeper dive in the SIPs panels. Okay, y'all, Will is back from the job site, and guess who he brought with him? A couple of the Extreme Panel guys. First off, let me introduce to you Perry and Josh. Uh, guys, tell me what y'all do with Extreme Panel, by the way. I, I've been with Extreme for 24 years. I've been in sales the whole time, and uh, I've, it's been such a fun product to know and to get to know really, really well. And uh, it's, I've loved every second of my 24 years there. So we got two decades of experience with you. How about you, Josh? I've been with Extreme now for 15 years. Okay. So just love and experience as well. Very cool. So this is the first time you were, uh, Will, on a job site with SIPs going on. That's right. Tell me some of your thoughts now that you're back from Kansas. What, what are the things that sticks out yeah. for you about the system? I was, I was impressed, I have to say. I, I was a little bit doubtful going out there thinking, what are we going to be looking at? Um, and honestly, I, I had the wall system envisioned. I had no idea what the roof system was going to look like. That that really blew my mind, if I'm being honest. Um, but really, the the takeaways for me was just the speed that they were able to frame that house. That was incredible. I mean, just the the end of dry time was wild to me. Yeah. 
Um, so that was a big one. And because I mean, you're saving a ton of frame and labor just in speed. And then the whole, I guess, the savings on the whole project just because of the speed of it. Um, and then really the fact that it's already insulated and most importantly, air sealed as soon as it's put up. You that's know, really that, that's a really neat thing. Because like I said, Eric was able to put a little windy unit air conditioner in that thing and keep it cool. And then, I mean, it's hot in Kansas this time of the year, just like it is here in Austin or back in Alabama. And he, like he said, the plumbers sure like to come work at his job when it's a nice 70 degrees inside. So yeah. it was neat. I, I think just the instant um, air seal is so neat about um, sips. You know? So Perry, I used uh, early on the example of kind of a Yeti cooler, mm -hmm. the, you know, high performance cooler with thick insulation that's continuous and a good air seal. Uh, any anecdotal stories from your 20 years from people about their heating and cooling bills that you pass on to us? We see it all every day. Um, there's, there's never a customer that's called that's really not happy about their energy consumption because it's half at least of what it normally would be. Wow. And I mean, like our factory, we we're just talking about in December, 75,000 square feet for 300 bucks, roughly to so, heat our building so in Minnesota. In Minnesota, your right. factory is built from your panels. 100% from our panels. And your bill on 75,000 square feet right. of heated <laughs> space in freaking Minnesota mm -hmm. is how much? It's around 300 to 350. <laughs> Yeah, it's, that's and crazy. that's an average of 20 foot ceilings probably too. So the volume is incredible. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wild. I mean, our our customers are all happy. And to have a build up in five or six days and to be air conditioning it, that's unheard of in normal construction. You just yeah. don't have that. That's pretty serious. Yeah. Josh, tell me about that cycle time when it comes to dry in. Cause you know, we've got an OSB panel here uh, I don't think of OSB as being very waterproof, right? So we want to get this this house dried in. What does that cycle time do uh, for your builders in terms of being able to dry in? Well, I mean, once I mean the best part about our panel too, I think, is the zinc borate OSB. Okay. You know, having that outside skin and inside skin have the zinc borate in it, so antifungal, termite resistant, carpenter ant resistant. Um, the dry in time is really, you know, probably 50% less when it comes to a sit panel versus a uh, stick built construction. That's a big deal. So. Mm -hmm. And and for the nerds out there that are thinking, uh, you know, I'm worried. I'm worried about this expanded polystyrene core. Like, what does that do for me, uh, Perry, in terms of moisture movement, being able to dry the building out, that sort of thing? What do you tell those folks? Well, and this will actually take on some moisture, but it only takes on so much. There's moisture inside of it, it'll float. So it's actually, that doesn't care about the moisture unless it just can't ever escape out of it. Mm -hmm. And by it being able to dry, which we would always promote a surface on the exterior that would be able to dry, that's the key is always keeping, if it does get wet, to be able to dry it out. All right. So that fast, quick, always having that that air movement on that outside. And by dry, you mean a membrane that's a mem protecting so, it that has correct. some vapor permeants too. Vapor permeance is a big deal. On the top of the skin, say that there's moisture from the build mm -hmm. that needs to get out. Yep. If we put ice and water on top of this, it's bonded right to it, yep. it can never escape. So it, it really has a hard time escaping. Mm -hmm. So by using the right products on the top and on the outside, uh, we can assist the, the moisture potential problem from ever happening. So Perry, actually, now that you mentioned that, I wonder if we could pull up the drone footage that you guys took Will last week, because you guys were flying panels in place, and there was a couple things I wanted to ask uh, on that. So in this image, you're seeing, it looks like a pretty darn big panel coming in which with uh, a piece of equipment. Can you explain what's going on in that? Sure, so in this case, we have an eight foot by 24 foot panel. Ooh. It's pre-cut at, at the top for the very ridge of the, of the way up at the peak. Mm -hmm. And you can notice that lift plate that we're using. That lift plate is one that we have made at Extreme Panel. It's way overbuilt. And Did that- that come on from your factory? That, no, we have them so you can remove them. Okay. So there's 18 holes in that lift plate that you can put screws into. And we simply use a two inch panel screw that works great. We can oh, lift awesome. it right from the top skin. And as long as it's not a, you know, a 50 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour wind day, right. which it was windy that day. So you can see that we got two ropes off of it. Um, but 
by guiding that panel that way, they can maneuver the panel however they need to do it. Uh, there are people that like to put three and four lift plates on, and they can certainly do that. Um, but in this case, it, it's it's really easy to just be able to move, maneuver it that way. And here he's got a sky track. It's not a huge one, um, but he has a, a, a lift on or a extension on it mm -hmm. that allows him to reach a lot of it. Um, about, I would say 75% of our jobs are done with a sky track. And then, uh, but a lot of guys prefer a crane. They'll just set a crane up and they'll lift the whole thing into, sure. into sight. So when the panels are that big, you're not gonna be lifting those by hand. It's all done with machinery. Yeah. And uh, putting that up and having it up in a matter of a minute or two, um, that's 192 square feet of insulated roof put up in that amount of time. Holy cow. Now I'm seeing uh, before that panel drops, looks like a big old glue lamp. Talk to me about that process for the framer installing that glue lamp. Is there metal connectors he's got to put on first? Like, you know, if we're building traditional framing, I'm thinking about a hanger that needs to be special mm -hmm. ordered from Simpson. Right. What's that process look like? And, and yes, sometimes we have those. In this case, we actually had the pockets put right into the wall. Mm. So our CNC cuts out that pocket perfectly. Ahead of time. Ahead of time at the factory. Yeah. So that's all done back in Minnesota. And so then the framer just needs to trim that uh, the, the, glue lamp the, yep. and cut the ridge to fit the right. Nope. That ridge is actually all done. That out actually oh, comes that right? with that ridge cut already in it. That? So sweet. And then underneath that is a glue lamp column supporting that within our wall system. So in that shot that you're looking at, in that wall, there's three uh, pieces of glue lamp that would hold up three ridge beams. You're only seeing the two, the one up the top and then this yeah, yeah. one mid beam. Gotcha. But yeah, it gives them ample support for that eight by 24 panel. And Matt, on this clip, you can see uh, two different things going on. We've got over the center ridge beam, we have a white vapor tape. Yeah, so that white tape right there in between there. What is that? In, so what the, it's, it's actually vapor tape. It's a sip seal vapor tape, huh. and that goes over the ridge beam. It's an 18 inch wide tape, and that will allow for no moisture to go through the ridge from the inside. So after that panel gets put in, that tape gets put up to the bottom of the panel, and no moisture can get into that that's one of the most critical spots, way up at the ridge. All yeah. your moisture is going to try to go up through there. Sure. So we eliminate that from happening. Gotcha. Um, and then am I noticing that the <laughs> framing on the gable is already that's, pre-done? That's what we call a tail pocket system. Huh. We can overhang the panel just like you have a two foot or three foot overhang right. up to six or even eight foot we've done with the panel. Wow. Gets to be crazy, but we can also do it with typical framing. We call it a tail pocket system, like ladder framing. Mm -hmm. um, but here they just had a small overhang coming out the front uh, just to finish it off. Gotcha. And it, it looks like a normal two by six fascia. And then they'll just put a bar drafter on there Correct. and you're mm -hmm. done. And now, yep. and now you've got a thinner, Eve profile that doesn't look like this big, for instance, 12 right. inch right. that you might have had, had that mm -hmm. come all the way out. Correct. Now, now, what is the blue roofing membrane and why is that down on one side but not the other? Well, and they're simply going to get to it. They put the other side of the roof on, they immediately put this GAF deck armor on. Okay. And the reason we like this GAF deck armor product is because it's vapor permeable mm. and it allows the moisture that could be trapped underneath that okay. OSB skin to escape up and dry the skin. Yeah. So that is critical. It's yeah. very critical. And then on this, on the top of the roof, we would actually promote a ridge vent yep. so that air can flow up and it can uh, moisture can escape out of that top of that sheeting if it needed to. I love it. Now, of course, you can use whatever roof membrane you want on top, but my build show nerds know that I would like to see a one by four rain screen oh, yeah. with a metal roof on top. That would make a bomber assembly. And, and we would always promote airflow because yeah. airflow is the yeah. key. Because then and, you got plenty of space if there was some moisture to dry right. out in there. Uh, and then you've got, also got that secondary barrier to make sure if anything gets past that metal roof that it's going to flow right out on that right. uh, deck armor product from GAF. I do need to ask you though, what happens if somebody makes a big mistake and we get a roof leak? Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to cause a structural issue because I've leaked on my OSB? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that, Josh? Yes, I can take that. Um, basically what happens is if that top skin ends up getting um, wet and moisture's on there and you have to replace it. Um, we have fixes through through our facility to 
take off that piece of OSB and then replace a new new piece of OSB in that section if we had to. Okay. Um, it's the same thing with like remodeling. You know, if somebody wanted to add a wall system, mm -hmm. or I mean, a window to a wall system. Um, basically, we have we have fixes where we can add a header. We can add, um, you know, have have the, have the components to uh, add those headers within within a wall system. So, yeah. It's just the detail you're talking about that any roofing repair company or framer could follow your detail and fix that piece of rotted OSB. Correct. That's awesome. Yeah, that's actually a question I've been asked already. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm switching gears here a little bit, but you know, as I see that roof panel go in, the first thing I think of is automatically you guys are gonna have all of your HVAC systems in the air conditioned space because you've got a conditioned attic built in with your system. Mm -hmm. I really like that. <laughs> but what's that gonna do to my mechanicals? I'm suspecting we're gonna have much smaller mechanicals. Is that right, Perry? Typically, we're running at least half as far as the BTUs needed, and your your AC load can be cut in half, and you actually want it to be cut in half. Yeah. Because we're so efficient, you need that equipment to run 100% efficient. Yeah. If it's not running, it's not efficient. That's so right. people think that, hey, if my air conditioner is on for 10 minutes and it shuts off, that's great. No, that's not true. You really want it to run so it's the dehumidification process that's right. gets going. Great point. And that's the key for health of us and for the building itself. Yeah, we want so, that unit to run for a long time. Right. Uh, in effect, we want to put that little four cylinder engine in that runs a lot mm -hmm. rather than putting a big V8 engine that's too big and right. isn't sized correctly mm -hmm. that just runs for a short time, cools it down, but doesn't take care of that latent humidity, Right. Uh, that latent moisture in the air. And that's one thing we do. We work with ener energy raters to help us with the sizing for wherever this house is, what are the specifics that'll make that house work right? That's a really big deal. I love that conditioned attic space. And I would like to see more builders in the South uh, using your system because we've got so many attics up here that are really dumb, <laughs> that are traditional vented attics that have duct work up in the attic space when it's 140 degrees up there and putting your duct work, your mechanicals inside this attic with an R52 lid mm -hmm. on top of that, that also has really good air tightness. I mean, yeah. well, didn't I hear Eric say that he's getting like passive house numbers yeah. from his builds yeah, when it comes to air one, tightness? I think the one he had tested lately was like a 0.2. In mm -hmm. the middle of Kansas. Yeah. Mm -hmm without any specialized equipment or weirdo whatever, <laughs> tapes or sealants or... Yeah. The or, normal system. Yeah, I mean, it's a system. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. That really speaks to me. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Well, I'm thinking about it, Perry and Josh. Let's actually cut to this section of the guys putting the wall up, because I think I'd like to hear you guys kind of narrate what's happening in this scene in terms of how the panels go together, what's going on with that ceiling, what's happening in the city? So what they're doing there is they're actually adding a SIP seal to the joint and they're creating a picture frame on the foam itself and they're also putting sealing at the sill plate um, to create a gasket at the joint. And what's happening there is they're gonna actually lift that panel up in the air and there's um, there's a box blind, insulated box blind at the joint already. Mm -hmm. So that's basically gonna be like a tongue and groove fit at that joint. And that's what this is right here on the display. This is that box Exactly blind. right. Gotcha. Yep, yep. And that, that uh, bottom plate that's anchored to the concrete, that's just traditional two by material, right? Yeah, Freshly so what treated? we do is, with a slab on grade, we actually place a treated base plate and we anchor that to the concrete and then we add a two by six on top of that um, treated base plate. Ah. And it's recessed inch and a half at the bottom and slides over the top of that two by six and rest on top of the treated Got it. OSB. So that way the bottom of your OSB is actually at least an inch and a half off the concrete. And you're seeing kind of like this top plate here, a wider uh, piece on the bottom. And then inside that assembly is sandwiched in there another uh, two by six basically. Exactly right. Yep. Now, can you guys also do walls in thicker sizes as well? I mean, basically we, we, we offer from four inch panels up to 12 and a quarter inch panels. 12 and a quarter inch walls? Yep. Now that's we've serious it, business. We've done it before. That's we're like doing 51 on the wall. We're yeah. doing several of them right now in Minneapolis coming up here this, this year. You could probably heat that with a candle walls. in the winter mm -hmm. time or five yeah. candles is my mm -hmm. heating system. How about, how about uh, roof thicknesses? Up to 12 and a quarter. Right? Up to 12 yep. and a quarter, yep. R51 basically. Right. But if you wanted to, you could also add a couple inches of rigid foam on the top deck too, right? If you wanted to, if you wanted to get an R100 roof assembly or R75, that would be no big deal. Yeah. Otherwise, you can also go to a neopore foam. 
Okay. You know, graphite foam, and that adds a graphite within the foam. It gets you yeah. a higher value to get GPS you. foam. GPS, GPS. Yeah. exactly yeah. right. So that'll give you um, a graphite in the foam, which gets you an R60 on that roof. Holy cow, mm -hmm. that's wild. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. And then when it comes to weather bearer on the outside, basically we've got this OSB skin, which is really airtight to begin with. We're not worried about necessarily air tightness, but we want to make sure that it's water uh, proof, yep. mm -hmm. uh, water resistant, I guess technically is the right mm -hmm. term. We're not building a submarine here that's waterproof. Right. Uh, I assume probably most people are using traditional house wraps. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we offer we offer uh, a weatherization package, is what we call it, and we offer a Tyvek, mm -hmm. um, a drain screen. It's just rain screen, um, basically. It's crinkly. Yeah, it's crinkly, and it creates a drainage plan behind the behind the siding. Yeah. It all really comes down to what siding you're going to use. If you're going to use hardy board, LP smart side, right. you know, we just, we want to make sure we ask that question before we deliver that product to the site to make sure it's. Um, what the what the um, the uh, cladding needs. And for my nerdy builder friends watching this, I would love to see somebody take this extreme panel and do a Prosco R guard on top of that, a mm -hmm. fluid applied system. Sure. Yeah. This would be the perfect substrate to do a fluid applied on top of, like the R guard. You know, use the joint and seam, which is the pink one, uh, at all the bottom joints where it meets the foundation as an extra belt and suspender seal. Uh, do the body in the uh, orange fluid applied, like I, I've uh, made a video on not too long ago, which is, uh, uh, I think they call it the R guard. And then, um, boy, all of your rough openings could be done with a fluid pod as well, because that would have no mm -hmm. issues uh, on this expanded polystyrene foam as well. System. It'd make a really bulletproof yeah. system. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. What have we missed, guys? We talked about amazing cycle time. We talked about big panel size. I know something I was gonna ask you, Perry. Talk to me about strength of your wall panels compared to your traditional framing. You know, this this is sized kind of like a two by six. Mm -hmm. Is this as strong as or stronger even than a two by six assembly? It's actually stronger than a two by six. Uh, our engineer has told us a two by 10, 16 on center is what you would compare that to. Holy cow. So that, and no one builds that way. I mean, we just don't hardly. Yeah. Um, so two to three times stronger than a conventional stud frame wall, shear walls. I mean, why wouldn't you build an interior wall if you needed a shear wall on the inside? Yep. Build it with these panels because it's all sheathing. Um, you know, we have states where you're worried about wall bracing, where they're just sheeting a corner. Well, this is perfect for the shear because it, it's all about wall bracing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when this gets put together, the fasteners are what the engineer has used, but the sip seal that we use adds way more strength. It can almost take the fasteners out and that sip seal is gonna hold this thing together. Because it's glued in that whole thing together. Which is not calculated in any of our numbers. Right, so, that's pretty yeah. wild. Mm -hmm. You know what else isn't calculated in any of your numbers? I bet the ability to put a picture or maybe even a cabinet wherever you'd like, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if people are like, oh man, this is amazing. I don't have to block for anything. It's pre-blocked. Right. Cabinet guys absolutely love it because yeah. they can skew that, that cabinet right to the wall. Yeah. You know, it really comes down to the um, the uh, fastening schedule to yep. skew that, mm -hmm. how much weight you want to put under that wall. One of the things mm -hmm. on our checklist is always to add blocking in bathrooms for future ADA bars, sure. accessibility if mm -hmm. it ever comes mm -hmm. to bath. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just, th no more. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. All right, we've talked about a lot of really top-notch things, some really cool things. There's got to be some downsides, and one of them that comes to mind that I'm worried about is, how do I want an electrical? <laughs> it's really not a big deal, and a 10-minute conversation with the electrician will go a long ways in, because he's just scared. They've never yeah. seen it before. Yeah. They simply don't know that we have a grid system of, of chases throughout the wall and throughout the roof. And then, you know, we're trying to take the electrical plan for the lighting, and we're trying to accommodate that as uh, much as we can. Gotcha. So we can we try to take the fear out of it for them, and then they realize it's really not that big deal. My hole's already made. I just right. gotta go find it and utilize it. Gotcha. So yes, they're, it's different because they can't see it, but in actuality, it's it's not any harder. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, all the interior walls are traditional, probably two by four stick framing. So the electrician's gonna, frame and wire, or not frame, wire those traditionally, right? Mm -hmm. But but how does that work with the um, uh, with those chases you mentioned? Like this hole that I'm seeing in this top plate, yep. is that coming from you guys? So this hole here actually was put in by the contractor on site because we have a vertical chase right here. So 
Having that cut by the contractor so the electrician has that access is really nice. And if it were me, there's one every four feet, a vertical chase. Mm -hmm. I would cut one every eight to 12 feet so that you know he has access into a certain segment of wall, but not overdoing cutting the holes into the Is that what those chase. red lines were that I saw on there? Yep, we have those all marked. They, we, the factory just takes a marker just to signify there's a chase behind it. That's all from the inside, gotcha. so you know that's there. Okay. That makes sense. So really, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's not longer necessarily in electrical. Mm -mm. In fact, they may actually be drilling less. We even have bids to come back in less, and that's that's reality. I mean, it it uh, it's not that big of a deal, and we got to take the fear out of it for them. And we have some really cool lighting systems that we've been introduced to that uh, we'll talk about that are really fun because you're not running 110 in the roof. You're doing 18 gauge wire. Oh, wow. So it's really cool. Low volt. Low volt. Check and literally out. low volt. You're, you're talking about putting the drivers in a closet and then running thermostat wire up into the roof. That's so crazy. It's cool stuff. So none of that heat is in the roof and at the light. Yeah. So introducing things like that into this system is what we're kind of all about. What can we do to improve our already great SIP system what products can go in it that are better. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Josh, talk to me about waste. You know, is, is there uh, much panel cutting? Is there much dumpster use? Uh, you know, what can we expect on the job site in terms of waste when, from when your you're system? with extreme panel, you know, a lot of things, everything, everything kind of shows up pre-cut. Your, your headers are all pre-made, your header supports are all done. All your window, window bucking materials there. Um, you know, the pile of waste on a job site really could fit into a 40 gallon garbage container, um, which you're going to see with the Kansas City job. That's right. I mean, there's very minimal waste. Dang. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah. And the, the quietness of the job site, too. I mean, there's just not any really cutting and trimming and all that. I mean, it's just. It's just basically it shows up like a big Lego set put together on yeah. site, so you're not. And did I hear you weren't even you didn't even have a compressor on that job that you were at? Is that right? No, uh, they had a few battery operated nail guns, and <laughs> yeah. that's it. That's right. That's Holy really cow! It, it all comes so, with. It's all full just package. part of the deal. How about how about screws? Because there is a fair amount of structural screws in this job. Those are coming right. from y'all as well. Yep, we'll have like for the roof. It'll be a long panel screw from. 11 to 15 inches, 18 Ooh. inches long. That is a big screw. Yeah, and then we supply for like the plating, instead of just nailing it down, we supply a three inch, like a CTX lag screw. So the engineering that we do up above and beyond what it's engineered for yeah. is just extreme doing what we always have done. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Always supplying the hold downs within the panels too. Yeah. That all becomes with the package, so the builder's not running into a job or run into a big box store to grab hold downs. That's fantastic. Good stuff, guys. Let's switch gears because you actually brought with you a builder developer uh, who has switched to using extreme panel from some traditional, and he's actually going to get into some of the costs uh, and the dollars involved on his project and why he made that decision. Uh, so that being said, let's reset and get Matthew over here. Matt, thanks for joining us, brother. Sure. Appreciate it. So by way of introduction, Matt, you are a builder developer in Alabama, actually not too far from Will. Give us a quick background on who you are. Yeah, so I work for Navigate Affordable Housing Partners. We're primarily a community development organization. Um, our bread and butter is workforce and affordable housing. Um, our mission is to create a, a better mousetrap for housing to, to make up for the lack of affordable housing in our communities. Yeah. Um, so That's we're focused awesome. on innovation and, and bringing housing to market in a more efficient, expedient way. And you've recently made the swap to Extreme Panel and have a bit of an understanding between traditional construction and Extreme Panel. Talk me through that. Yeah, so one of our pilot programs we're doing right now is we really wanted to test the, the panelized system against traditional stick building. Um, so we built three houses. Two of them were uh, SIP houses and one was a traditional stick framed house. Um, all the same floor plan, all the same layout. Um, so it was a really good test of apples to apples comparison about what's the speed to market, what's the energy efficiency, what's the cost of construction, all of those things to factor into how do we get scalable infill development in, in a lot of our communities. So talk me through the traditional one, uh, pier and beam construction, it sounds like, uh, where you are, uh, with traditional like two by, let's say, floor joists, and then two by four, two by six construction? We wanted to create it as close as we could using traditional materials, so our, our exterior walls are all two by six construction, okay. um, which would be an upgrade from the typical two by four construction you, you would see in our, our product. Um, and then our roof is two by 12, uh, double packed uh, insulated bat in there. So we really wanted to build as closely as we could to really 
really test the value of the sit panel. And what did you find? I'm curious. So initially, right out of the gate, we got a uh, 0.79 ACH50 blower door test on our SIP panel. How about and that, that was without even trying. So that's just a testament to <laughs> the SIP seal and the, that is tight. and the air tightness of that. Mm -hmm. And um, using a pretty traditional window and door package, I'm assuming, right? It was all assuming. off the shelf. So it's our local hardware store picking yeah. up vinyl clad windows. Mm -hmm. um, so we really didn't even try to make these uh, really airtight, but we kind of knocked it out of the park. 0.79, that's amazing. Exactly. And uh, talk to me about some of the metrics in terms of uh, how long it took to build the houses traditionally versus with extreme panel SIPs. And then also, I'd love for you, if you're willing, to give us some comparison on cost. Yeah, absolutely. So the two houses we built, we built them in a, a weak blitz. Perry came down mm -hmm. from Minnesota to help kind of lead the charge. Mm -hmm. uh, we had both of the houses completely done in four days total. Um, two was, houses in four days. Two houses in four days. How about that? It was incredible. Was that awesome, Barry? It was awesome. It was so much fun. And the best thing was I had brought two other guys from Minnesota, uh, and uh, one was training himself. So it was really two guys that knew it knew the system and uh, Nathan Hoekstra from Iowa we can give him kudos on coming down and the first thing he does is unloads a semi right on a Sunday and uh, we have these huge panels eight foot by 24 that he's offloading <laughs> there's a there's a telephone or a, a power line above <laughs> we have all these constraints but Nathan just okay got it and we have a small site and we just started unloading panels Holy and it cow. worked really well within an hour or so we had uh, probably two hours three hours we had two trucks unloaded with two houses there and Dang. so everything was on site Stage ready ready for us yeah. to go yep and uh and this is pier and beam construction mm -hmm. Which means that even the floor system was from you guys too, right? Yeah, we made a sit panel floor. Uh, it was an eight inch thick floor. Um, and they were all like eight by 16 foot panels. So we had an R33 floor deck Holy built God. over the pier and beams. And literally that was what, an hour and a half? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the first floor was down. And then we started getting ready for walls and, and literally about three quarters of a day, the walls were up. And then uh, the next morning, a ridge beam got set and the roof panels went on. And how big are these houses? They're 31 by 38. 1,200 square foot. So, yeah. Space. Condition. Okay, so, yeah. single story houses single, as mm -hmm. well? Mm -hmm. Holy cow, that's fast, man. Mm -hmm. Dang. Mm -hmm. And Matt, the thing I like about that is most crawl spaces in the South are absolutely disgusting. And there's huge communication, meaning, you know, a traditional, let's say, two by eight floor system that most people are framing on pier and beam. All that nasty stuff in the crawl space, the air, uh, the moisture, the crawly things that are down there, they migrate up to the house. And in your system, you've got huge R30 plus, what'd you say it was, Perry? Yeah, R33. R33, continuous yep. insulation and a really tight air seal. Also, no ductwork down there, right? Aren't right. your ducts gonna be in the attic? Yeah, all of our ductwork's in the conditioned space up and we have drop ceilings above the bedrooms and that's where we run all the ductwork. So those houses are super healthy and super efficient right. for your homeowners. Yeah. That's a really big deal. And to think that this is relatively affordable housing too. Yeah, and that's the important thing to, you know, the clientele that we serve is, you know, they don't have the resources to fix a lot of problems. So the durability that comes with the sit panels is just in incredible. They're not gonna have to go back and fix things that are falling apart mm -hmm. yeah. or the energy efficiency. We haven't really even talked about that, but we're saving hundreds of dollars a month um, just by having a, a good tight shell and insulated space that, that can be applied to it, the cost of construction or, or the mortgage payment, which is building equity into the communities, which is drastically important to a lot so of So in other words, if you have a, let's say a $100 electric bill rather than a $250 electric bill, that $150 savings could be used for better construction, right? Correct, yeah. And you're building equity on your on your purchase. That's the, the largest investment people have is their house. Yeah. So instead of sending money to the power company, we're mm -hmm. sending money back into our, into our mm -hmm. house. I love it, Matt. Talk to me about the real, like where the rubber meets the road dollars though. What, what did you find on a dollar comparison? Yeah, so we, again, we built very comparable uh, houses as close as we could to each other. Um, we found that the, using this, the SIP panel was about 10% higher total construction cost. Okay. Um, and a lot of that is, yeah, the, the material was more expensive than framing, but my, my labor rate, my man hours were 30% of what I would use on a traditional framed house. How about that? So that's really where you make up the cost savings. So 10% more, what's that, like a half million dollar build? So it's 50,000 bucks? What, what are we talking, what are the real numbers? Yeah, so we're about, $200 a square foot, little under $200 a square foot okay. um, in, our, in our market. So it was 20 bucks more a square foot, maybe, right. let's say. Right. 
That's not bad at all. Or in in, uh, in your case, actually, you're, we talked about this earlier. Your panel system, if you, I hope you don't mind me talking about this, uh, was like forty to fifty dollars a square foot per framed foot. Is that right? Your package was like forty five thousand bucks, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Something like that for a twelve hundred square foot house. Mm -hmm. If you think about the cost of your spray foam contractor, let's say all the lumber, all the waste, all the additional labor on traditional framing, plus now you get to use smaller mechanical systems. I'd be willing to bet, Will, that even though Matt's saying this costs 10% more, that if you really did a comparison for the houses that you and I build, yep. especially with bigger houses and more square footage, you know, the more square footage you build, typically the cost per square foot goes down a little bit. I'd be yeah. willing to bet, Will, that's less. What do I you think? You gotta, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we have to look at the air barrier, too, because remember, when SIPS goes in, it's already air sealed. Mm -hmm. That part's done. But you and I have spent lots of money on products. Time and effort. Building our houses and labor to air seal, to air seal, to air seal. So if you factor that in alone, I guess, or you factor the air sealing techniques that you and I are used to using in with the traditional framing that you're using for your comparison, I mean, that's a big difference. I think that it's it's truly an inverse of what he saw. Yeah. Instead of that 10% uptick, I think we'd actually see it being cheaper. That's you know, super if cool. If you tried to use the same techniques. Yeah. So, Matt, how can people learn more about your project? Yeah, so we're on the internet, navigatehousing.com. Um, there will be links all over the pages. Uh, specifically, this project is Goldwire Heights. That's the community we're working in. Um, we're a community-based organization operating in, in kind of a the lower income communities of Birmingham. Um, so all of our information is on the website and plenty of ways to get in touch with us. That's awesome. Perry and Josh, you just left a minute ago. Thanks for making the trip down to see us. And Will, a huge thanks yeah. to you for making the trip to Kansas uh, to see the job site. <laughs> Uh, to summarize, I, I, if you agree, I would say I'm really impressed. We've got to build one of these, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I am very impressed with it overall. And I think getting our hands on one in the, in the future will be really nice. I think that's going to happen yeah. sooner rather than later. <laughs> Guys, big thanks to Extreme Panel for sponsoring. Of course, you can learn more on their website, extremepanel.com. But here's what I'd recommend. You know, guys like Perry and, and Josh, they're not salespeople, really. They're, they are builder um liaisons for lack of a better term i mean this guy's been with the company 20 plus years they totally get your problems your construction your concerns maybe your apprehensions call them you got a set of plans that you're working on they could give you a ballpark price they can help you figure out how can i navigate from doing this traditionally to doing your panels uh, systems and as we said earlier really big deal that they can help you out with mechanical design they can help you find a frame carpenter they really have a solutions based company this is not just a panel company so huge thanks to these guys for sponsoring guys if you're not currently a subscriber hit that subscribe button below you know we've got really nerdy content every tuesday and every friday follow us on tiktok or instagram all the while we'll see you next time on the build show